Hello and welcome to The Witchling Marjolaine, a free low vision novel I found in Itch.io, developed by Unfinished Circle. And well, from what I checked out, you know, like a few minutes of it in the beginning, it seems uh, pretty good, you know, it seems well made and has a pretty uh, good art style to it. Um, you know, I think it's just yeah, it's just a little short little story about a young witch named well Marjolaine. Let's see what it's about. Let's start. Let's see. Well, Marjolaine sat at the uh, at the counter as she had for many many days prior. As slow as the business had been lately, it made a little sense to be open so early. Had there been a single day of more than two deliveries recently? Perhaps she would abandon the counter and pop over to the bakery down the way for a croissant or two. Mm. She could almost smell them. The butter, the flour, still steaming in the cool morning air. And ripping into one, oh, the way they would crackle. But she had yet to add the ultimate topping. Raspberry jam. Hmm. Did you add raspberry jam to a croissant? I don't know, that seems weird to me. I guess, well, I kind of don't like sweet things usually so I, I i wouldn't put a jam on croissant but i don't know maybe that's just me uh and just a bit off the knife sell a cold enough to brace against that warm flaky divinity yes the godly croissant her eyes glazed over marjolaine close your mouth oh. you're drooling all over my counter and instantly, she was awakened to the scowling face of the owner of the Broomstick Express, her teacher, her boss, and now her judge, Madame Odette. I like the way the uh, animations are, by the way, you know? Again, I, I think I mentioned it before in like a different game. I forget which one it was, but uh, usually you don't animate blinking, you know, in the visual now. Usually it's just a still image. But in this game, they do animate the blinking. She stared the little girl down, looking at the small puddle of drool at the countertop and shaking her head in annoyance. Marjolaine dabbed at the small puddle over her elbow. Yes, dab. Sorry, madam. How many customers have you scared away of your open mouth daydreaming, eh? As if we had any. Marjolaine finally noticed that her teacher held a small bundle wrapped in yesterday's newspaper. Um, is that delivery, madam? I thought you might be hungry. So I brought some croissants from the bakery down the lane. The madam set the bundle on the counter, which caused Marjolaine to perk right up. She sat upon the bundle, but before she could claim her prize, Odette snatched it away. However, breakfast is not for naughty little witchlings that loaf around and nap like old dogs when they should be studying. Marge let her shoulders slump and stare at the floor. It would be a long morning without any food. You know, they do say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And for her teacher to dangle the tree in front of her face only to take it away moments later was a special cruelty. She wanted to be more upset and she was, but this was something deserved. I'm sorry, Madame Odette. I should have been more diligent with my duties. I will not let it happen again. And? Marjolaine? Uh, Marj I said Marj Marjolaine. I want to say Marjolaine. I'm not sure how you pronounce that name, actually, but Marjolaine. Met her eyes for a moment, took her meaning, then looked back to the floor. And I will dust the whole shop. Good girl. Odette patted the girl's head and set the pastries on the counter and moved to retreat to her garden on the floor above. We have jam in the pantry. Remember, the next spot is only a few days away, so study. If you have to do it while you eat, make sure your fingers are clean. I do not want dirty little witching fingers making the pages all sticky. Yes, madam. I have work to do in the garden, but yell if we need anything. Should we get the orders I would like to know? Yes, madam. Again, interesting art style, by the way. I don't know. I don't know how to like describe it. It's sort of like anime. It's, it's kind of like retro anime, you know. It's like '90s anime, sort of. I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure how to describe it. But anyway, but I like it. I like the art style. That's why. That's why I'm playing this game. Oh, they watched Martin set one of her books on the counter, and she lingered just a moment to watch her student gingerly turn to a page much further along than she expected. With that, she let herself smile before disappearing upstairs. Marjolaine, who was nearing the end of a primer on herbs, it had been interesting enough for her not to fall asleep outright. She learned that the benefits of the uh, 
chamomile. Is that you said chamomile? I want to say cham like chamomile. That's I, I think I said that before in like a different game. Chamomile? No, it's chamomile, right? Chamomile. Chamomile and lavender and sage, which hung from the rafters, extended beyond their wonderful smell. They had a deep connection to the season. With the turning of the leaves just around the corner, they would eat rosemary to replace them. Rosemary and... what was it? She was forgetting something, and it was the obvious kind of something. The kind that makes one smack their own forehead once they realize. Ah, the jam. Of course, how silly. Croissants were good on their own, but they needed jam to really set up the scrumptious peak for which the witchling so longed. She skipped over the kitchen and tossed open the cupboard. Blackberry. Certainly not the finest of toppings, but it would do. Marjolaine returned to the counter, small jar in hand. However, her croissants had now cooled just beyond perfection. So she was left with a tepid breakfast. It didn't crackle in just the right way. And subpar preserves. Not ideal by any definition, but ah well. She turned back to her book, making sure to wipe any leftovers on a... On a... Kerchief? Kerchief? Like handkerchief? Can you like shorten that to a kerchief? I don't know. I've never seen the word handkerchief shortened to just kerchief. But... I don't know. She grabbed... But leftovers on a kerchief. She grabbed her way back from the kitchen. The bell sounded. Yes, a customer. It is... Old Cloud, you know, from Final Fantasy VII, is really getting up there in years. She was so involved in her studies that she had not seen anyone outside the shop on the street. It was an old man with brows so bushy they obscured his eyes and a cloak that highlighted his broad yet droopy shoulders. Welcome to the Broomstick Express. May we deliver something for you? Ah, uh, yes. I've been here before. Sir? I would like something delivered. It's to a woman. I've got her picture if you need it. Okay. He produced a photograph as well as his old hand of a young girl. She's a bit older now. I'm sure you can manage. May I keep this until the job is complete? I'll take good care of it. Marjolaine halted a moment. She was to inform Odette of when someone needed a delivery, but maybe she was busy. Surely her teacher would not suffer any distractions from her work. Surely she would be proud that Marjolaine could handle the shop when she was otherwise occupied, wouldn't she? Yes, this would make up for her earlier lack of diligence. She would be a dependable witch, one everyone could rely on. Marjolaine? That was Odette, who called down as she descended the stairwell. That went that plan. Okay. Marjolaine, would you remember to clean the windows? You've got last time a, a customer. She greeted the old man without fully seeing him. However, when she moved around the counter and got a good look at him, her face changed from welcoming to something else. Uh, you... No, you cannot pay. But... No. No buts. Out of my shop. Good day. Shoo shoo. She nudged the old man out of the front door. <laughs> okay. Marge could see his shoulders drop as he exited. Her, her heart uh, sank a bit in response. Why did you do that? He's been here many times before. He asks us to deliver something, but cannot pay the full fee. It's just, you know, one of those, one of those pores, you see. <laughs> Shouldn't we help people who need it? When I have given something for nothing, or when I have given something for nothing once, it is kindness. What is expected of me every time, it is enslavement. Finish your breakfast, so get cold. Oh, yes. Odette is not very kind to people who can't pay their fees, I guess. Marjolaine had her mouth covered with a kerchief. Again, this that's weird to me, but I guess is it real is it a real word? I don't know. A, a, a kerchief. Mounting a broom in order to dust up at the very, very top of the bookshelf. So I imagine I mean she's a witch, right? I mean I I I assume Odette is also a witch. Can't they just like poof the dust away? Can't they just use magic? Guess not. Well, why would Madame Odette just turn someone away like that? She wondered, especially when business was so scarce these days. It was those blasted airplanes and the airships, the newest technology, uh, technological marvel that had taken everyone's fancy and refused to let it go. There was no place for a witch courier when you could have a dashing fellow in a flying machine deliver your precious things. How romantic was that? Hmm, airships. No, I mean, it really does just remind me of like Final Fantasy. Now, <laughs> usually there's an airship in most Final Fantasy games. 
Um, admittedly, it was romantic, and indeed, the Witchling Pond had become one of those that fly the ships. Become like a magic airship. It had to be complicated. All the things to do with flying were complicated. Room snakes, not complicated, but she'd been flying all her life. I guess, I guess just room snakes are just magic, it's easy. But, uh, what was this? Letters atop the bookshelf? Well, that won't do. Marjolaine thumbed through them. Large opposing fonts covered their envelopes. Words like past due and final notice. Such words in, in such letters were ice in her gut. They would surely lose the shop. What will Madame Odette do without it? Well, first she'll, like, use the power of her, of her you know, her magic to, like, shoot lightning out of her fingers and destroy all the airships and therefore saving the witch industry by, by you know, sabotaging everybody else. No, um, she replaced the letters and blew some of the dust around to hide that she'd been up there and descended, replacing the broomstick to his place on the wall. They needed money. To get money, they needed jobs. To get jobs, they needed people to visit the shop. There was the old man, of course. Madame Odette had been adamant, or adamant to refuse him, though. But what, though? He cannot pay enough? Surely, if they were on their last legs, any amount would do. Then the solution was simple. She would find that old man take on that job. With any luck, other jobs would come by on that way. Or come by on the way. She had seen him exit and leave left. So perhaps she was quick, she could catch up to him. But now arose the question of what to tell Madame Odette. How would Marjolaine excuse her sudden departure? Oh, she wouldn't. She would simply take her bag, her broom, and leave. No point risking bad karma over a good deed, after all. And that is exactly what she did. She grabbed her hat, her broom, her delivery bag, took care not to trip the doorbell, and slipped out unnoticed. Madame Odette would be so proud of her making some money. Oh, yes, of course. I like neglecting her real work, you know, and just doing something else. Anyway, the witchly mounted her broom with a bounce and took off, taking care to fly above head high so she could quickly uh, move quickly without running into anyone. She caught a few incredulous glances, the kind you get from seeing an elephant march down the street, and it was to be expected. The odd witch was unusual, maybe even unfashionable, sight these days. You know, it's all, it's, you know, witchers are so last year. It's like, no, nobody's a witch these days. Everybody's a, um, I don't know. Everybody's a paladin, you know, <laughs> or whatever. I don't know, I, I'm trying to remember. I guess this universe, I mean, obviously there's witches. Witches are normal. There's airships, apparently. So it's like a mixture of magic and technology and everything, right? I guess that's what it is. She found the old man sitting outside cafe. He smiled softly upon seeing her land in front of him. Mister. Uh, it's been a, so long since I've seen a courier, witch. Hello, I was about to enjoy a light lunch. Care to join me? The first time I must apologize for my madame's behavior. It was uncouth and unbelievably rude of her to reject your job offer without hearing it out. Oh, <laughs> well, you certainly know how to apologize, don't you? Uh, come join me for lunch. Hear the words of an old man, I will call you this debt paid. The waiter brought her a small bowl of pear wedges and a plate of boiled egg slices on rye. The chai, she thought, had a nice flavor, though the pears were a bit underripe. She put them off for last. The old man himself only had a cup of coffee. This was my favorite cafe back in the day. I knew the owner when we were just school boys. I could pay for my portion. Ah, oh, no need. No need. I've earned a free meal or two here. That was just about a job offer. Marjolaine cocked an eyebrow at him. Must be the forgetful sort of old person. But he got lunch for her, so he couldn't be all bad. Well, you came by the Broomstick Express asking to deliver something. Ah, oh, yes. I would have very much liked to something delivered to a young girl. A woman now, I suppose. She... He spaced out as if in deep memory. I was not always there for her when I should have been. He watched people flutter to and about the street. When he finally spoke, it seemed as if it was, was to no one in particular. My whole life was spent putting on more than I was capable of. And even in those moments when I was drowning in my responsibilities, I never once thought myself incapable of making everyone happy. I only ever wanted to be a dependable person, you know. You know, level up, get a bunch of gill, you know, and use the buster sword to, like, slash people. I never turned down the chance to help anyone either and do side quests. Even when it inconvenienced me. Even if it meant missing something far more important. And I guess somehow it became more important for me to be dependable than to take care of the loans I loved. The old man once more took out the old photo 
of a young girl and looked upon it, again falling into a memorial trance. I ended up neglecting her when I need to have done so. He took a deep breath and set the picture down, fishing around his coat for something else. And now, well, this is all I have left. He produced the ring box, wrapped in a little green bow. This is what you want to deliver, sir. Indeed. It is the only thing I could give her, and it's far less than she deserves for all the neglect. This is my heart. See it too, and she receives it safely. Marjolaine stared at the box. Your heart, sir. Your, like, literal heart? Did you, like, rip it out and, like, no? You're still beating heart? Are you like a, are you like a, a lich or something? Is that your, <laughs> your, um, what's it called again? Phylacter, phylactery? Anyway. But the old man had gone, leaving behind only the box, a picture, and the cup of coffee. Mm, how mysterious. Uh, he'll want that picture back. How could he have wandered off without something so important? The elderly were so helpless. But where to find the girl? Surely, if she were a woman now, this picture would not be much help. But nevertheless, she placed the box in her bag. The picture, well, she could go to the police and ask about her. But what was this on the back? Writing. It was a street name followed by an apartment number. A perfect place to start. Once the waiter came around again, she asked him if, she, if he knew the location of the street, thanked him and took off. Who paid for the food though? <laughs> Nobody paid for the food? Huh? Uh, maybe, he, maybe, maybe the old man paid in advance. Anyway, walking was such a slow, or walking was such slow meandering. He could only get to a place after a great deal of effort. He may even tire up before he get there at all. And so much was was obscured on the ground. You know that for whatever reason, um, that sentence just reminded me of like a lot of dreams I have. I don't I don't know if you could call them nightmares. Sort of, but not like the scary kind. More of like the frustrating kind. Because yeah, I do have. I remember. A lot of dreams where I would like walk around, you know, and it would just take a million years to get anywhere. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else has those kinds of dreams, but I often have dreams. I mean, I often have dreams where I get lost for one, like in like a big city, you know. I'm just walking on the sidewalk. I don't know where to go, and then I just I just take so long to get anywhere. I don't know. That's that's what I that's what I always have. All right, those uh, those kind of dreams anyway. It just takes a million years to get anywhere. If only I could fly like a witch. So many buildings and all of them so tall. It's a wonder she could navigate that navigate at all. Flight though, flight was different. You could go anywhere you wanted, and all you had to do was turn your hand. You know, in dream I mean imagine in dreams you could like, you know, fly. Yeah, you know, that's what people do, right? Especially if you have like a lucid dream, you could just fly. I've never flown though. In a dream. I well, maybe one time actually no, I, I actually do remember like one time. One time, one dream, I did kind of fly, but it wasn't flying though, it was kind of like floating. If anything, I was actually scared <laughs> in that dream because it was like, I was floating too high. I, I would like go into space or something, I don't know. Or at least that's how I remember it. It was the wind whistling past her ears, a soothing chill on a hot day, a bath after working in the garden for a few hours. The crowns and noises, the quibbling. The stenches of the city all fell away beneath your feet, and troubles became nothing before the embrace of the sky. Well, not anymore. The crowds of people became the crowds of aeroplanes rudely rushing past, of airships milling about like great cows. The noises became engines propellers, chopping her precious winds and forming them into turbulent air streams, making navigation so much more difficult than simply dodging the odd belligerent pilot. And what was once was clear, brisk air now held the fate, but unmistakable scent of diesel on it. Still, she thought, look at these planes and fail to be odd. That a huge metal thing could fly and be so much heavier than a bird and so varied were their shapes. A bird was generally the same across all species. A head, a body, two wings, and a tail. A plane could have two bodies, two tails, four wings, and one of the exercise of the imagination. Some had a grace about them, others were ugly. Some were wooden canvas and many more were now metals of colors and shapes equal to their per uh, pilot's personalities. Perhaps that's why witches have faded from this world. Marjolaine knew more than anyone that magic was difficult. It took years of training to receive an appreciable result. Even those results were subtle, such as they may not have existed at all. With those aeroplanes, the results were immediate. She remembered the difficulty of her early days of flight, how difficult it had been to even get the broom to hover. It had taken months, but it felt like years. Now was no trouble, a thoughtless action akin to breathing. But not everyone held that patience, nor the magical aptitude. A man with neither of these things could simply purchase 
An airplane granted the ability to soar about like the birds. Well, at first you had to like have money. <laughs> anyway, he could travel the country as did the witches of old. He needed only a craft and the knowledge to fly it. It was like cheating, but then she wondered if she had known how to fly one of these craft, would she ever been a witch? Was it cheating to use knowledge of those before you? Was it not easy to be among those that dare fly a thing so much heavier than air? They always seemed so blasé about the whole thing, as if flying those metal beasts was a feat equitable to walking. Could the craft not fall apart around them? Could they be some sort of mechanical failure? Might the wings simply fall off due to improper maintenance? A broomstick offered no concerns as that, but would simply handle some straw at the end. Airplanes were immensely complicated things. A problem that could compound itself, leading to the death of the pilots to resolve a minuscule issue. That's why she feels such an attraction to them. But it was simply the danger of the catastrophe. Or was it the perseverance in spite of the danger? Perhaps that was this, she thought. It was a triumph over limitation. Look at them now. Lumbering airships, peppy little single-person pusher props, great cargo crafts. These, are, these people now rule the skies as witches once had. Okay, this is a little long monologue about how like great airplanes are, <laughs> okay? And here she was in her broomstick cheering them on. How silly she was. And all feeling took her as if she were a sailboat among warships. All of a sudden, she was acutely aware of herself and how ridiculous she looked sailing among these marvels. So she dipped low just above the buildings. Best not. Chance of collision with one of those aircraft, she told herself. The street held no apartments by name on the photograph. In its supposed place was instead a factory. She dismounted and asked a group of workers standing in front. What? <laughs> what? Why is it draw? You know, it's funny. All the, all, the, all the art was great. Now it's like this? Wait a minute. Excuse me. I'm a courier attempting to deliver a package to an apartment that used to be here. Ah, uh, they burned out years ago. I'm, I'm like a really crude drawing, but I think the place relocated two streets over. You'll see it. It's got green doors. Thank you, sir. We'll never see you ever again. That was like, really? <laughs> Why? I guess, you know, they didn't... I mean, I guess you could do it either way. You could either like spend the time to draw like a full character just for like a one-off that like, you'll never see them ever again or just like don't draw them at all but instead the developers chose a middle ground you know and just made a really cr crude drawing anyway and she was off again soon finding the pirates of the green doors which begged the question do the woman even live here anymore perhaps it'd be best to simply knock on the doors and ask around She approached the door closest to her and knocked. A rather fancy looking middle aged woman answered. Finally. Okay, she has a very pointy noise. A pointy, pointy, pointy nose, not noise, nose. I've been waiting a whole, a whole hour for delivery. The woman extended her hand expectedly. Well, let's have it. Julie needs his medicine before the three of the, of the clock, or he'll get gassy. Medicine, ma'am? Stupid girl, from the alchemist. You're the courier, right? Where is Julian's medicine? I'm afraid there's been a misunderstanding. Okay, there's there's alchemy, by the way. So it's like there's, there's like flying airplanes and also alchemy. I don't know, I'm trying to like... Obviously, this is, isn't the real world, but like... Like what kind of historical arrow this would be. I mean, you know, close, close to modern times, but not too modern, I guess. You know, to the point where there would be flying machines, but... Still, I guess, the idea of alchemy. Probably close to the, to the Enlightenment era or whatever. Something like that. Anyway. Well, if you're not from the Alchemist, what use are you? Wait, ma'am. I would be happy to go retrieve your medicine promptly, but I will need payment. But of course, I'm no savage. Payment will be issued on delivery. Here's the address. Now go and get it. I've waited one hour. Should not wait, un wait another. What happens if, you know, two people, you know, give her the medicine? She pay both? But Marjolaine now arrived at the address. There was no larger than Odette's shop, and in spite of the unfamiliar surroundings, she felt a kinship of the employees working there. Who are cr also crudely drawn. <laughs> she found the alchemist fussing over his display at the front of the building. He spoke without turning. And also not having, you know, proper uh, anatomy, or even just outlines, or like shading, or anything really. It's just a child's drawing. Hey, little miss, I'm afraid I cannot take walk-ins today. Pardon me, I'm from the Broomstick Express. On the job for... I'm gonna get her name. I'm to retrieve medicine for one Julian. Ugh, insufferable woman. You sent the last courier away. 
He turned finally, removing his glasses to clean them. A witch courier, eh? A quaint. I have a proposition for you. My deliveries are late getting here. I've just sent another service to go and fetch them. But you witches are fast as your broomsticks, no? If you go and retrieve my medicines before he does, I'll pay you what I promised him. But only if you complete the delivery before the other courier arrives. If he gets back first, you get nothing. Understand? They're a very competitive market. <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know if that's how it works in real life. You can't, you can't just do that. Anyway, I, I'll, I'll take the job. Acceptable. Here's the address, and the courses, and the credentials you'll need. Hurry on, then. You know, being a contract, you know, contract worker is hard, it's hard work. It's very super competitive, you know? You, like, if somebody's faster than you, you just don't get paid. <laughs> the alchemist turned to, return, uh, turned to return inside, but Marjolaine was already halfway down the block. She knew exactly where the shop was. It was across town, she was not nearly as fast as a plane, but surely she'd get there faster than the time it took them to land and take a car. She could make it, but she took off immediately to be certain. Doo, 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 doo. There was a large building visible from the air, and as soon as she saw it, she banked, shot toward the ground, and landed into a run and entered through the open front door. And more of these. The counselor raised his eyebrows, staring at the painting. Uh, paint, pa painting girl? Well, I mean, the other person's a painting, sort of. Well, more like crayon, really. Rather, uh, staring at the uh, painting girl who had just run into a shop. Yes? From the broomstick. Express about a, a delivery uh, for this person. She slapped the credentials on the counter. Hmm, which courier? Unusual. Is G sick today? I thought you was learning late. Sir, I'm on a deadline. Pardon me. Uh, catch your breath while I go and get those for you. He wandered in the back, allowing Marjolaine a moment's reprieve. And before she could get too comfortable, she, he was back. Uh, penicillin, as the doctor requests, and here's the bell, uh, bill as well. I see that he gets it. Marjolaine placed the medicines in her bag. Thank you. Penicillin. When was that invented? Cause that was that's the I don't know. Is that a, a modern medicine? I think it was invented pretty early on. I don't know, anyway, I don't know exactly when it was invented. Because again, it's like it's weird because you know normally when you think medicine, you think like a modern doctor. You don't think alchemy. But because when you think alchemy, they're gonna use like weird like potions. You know. Anyway, she was gone again into the sky. She sat alongside a pair of planes whose pilots waved her before speeding off. They weren't all bad, these aeroplanes. Can you do that? I mean, it depends on the planes, I guess. Because when I, I, obviously when I think of modern planes, I also think of the really big planes, no jumbo planes. They're really hard to see the witches, just wave with them, but anyway. Marjolaine landed in front of the pharmacy and charged inside, placing her bag on the counter. Delivery, penicillin for you. Alchemist looked at his watch, checked the chemicals, looked at the little witch, and back to his watch. My goodness, that could be more than 10 minutes. Let me get you that payment. The Broomstick Express, you said? Yes, I'll keep that in mind. And don't forget Julia's medicines. She thanked the man and set off for the apartments. Wee, laugh line. I wonder if we get any CG of her on the broomstick, though. You know, it's just her, her sprite just moving around instead. Well, it was turning out to be a good day. She just got paid quite well, in fact, and she was about to complete another job. Perhaps it wouldn't be grateful enough to help her locate the girl in the picture. And if she could, well, at least there was another payment. She was well on her way uh, to save Ego that shop. She'd be so much proud of Marjolaine for doing all this. Delivery, Mrs. Julian. She shouted, knocking the door to the woman's apartment. The woman answered, and large shark forced his way just outside between the two. Well, it's about time. She reached down, played with dog's floppy ears, babbling. See, Julian, the courier girl has your medicine so we can get you all better. Yes, we will. Oh, Julian, <laughs> Julian is a dog, okay. Yes, we will. Woof, woof. The door yipped and waggled its tail, and for the brief of seconds, the old woman's eyes held a spark at Julian's excitement. As if this was the first time in a while he spoke in such a way. The pair looked so much younger. Then those briefest of seconds ended, her smile faded. She turned to Marge with a scowl. Your payment. She offered a stingy few bills. Uh, if I could cup trouble you with... No, you may not. You have your payment, now leave us. The woman herded the door, or herded now less than the enthused creature inside, slammed the door in Marge's face. The witchling, or witch, the witching? The witching or the witchling, in turn, screamed through her own teeth and clenched her fist, stamping a foot in sheer frustration. <laughs> How rude, she thought. Perhaps a hex has sully her day. How about a little lightning? You know, maybe a fireball? Maybe like... Blizzard... 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 What's the Final Fantasy term for like ice? I always forget. 
It's Blizzard, obviously. Blizzara? Blizzardra? Blizzardara? How about Blizzardaga? Anyway, she thought of better. Madame Odin always said, When it's visited on another, she'll be visited on yourself thrice. And that is the law of return. Yes, the law of equivalent exchange. Be it good or bad. And she needed good. And certainly she needed three times as good as she wanted to save the shop. But a woman like that almost make anyone do it anyway. Just, just a little murder, don't worry about it. It's perhaps something small. Like a mirror to break the, at the sight of her visage. No, she was not worth the trouble. Almost, though. Mars chose the adjacent apartment and knocked. No answer. She tried again, but they must have been, must have been out. So she moved down the line. The next door was the same. Out or, or not answering. It was like this two more times. Mars, your lady finally got an answer all the way at the end of the block. Another old man. Uh, th I mean, th this guy is drawn, I guess. Hello. Can I help you with something? I'm even older than the, than the last guy. Oh, a witch courier. It's been a long time since I've seen one of those. Are there many of you left? You have a delivery for me? Sorry, I do not. Oh, well, what can I help you with, you little witch? I'm looking for the girl in the, f in the photograph. It's old, though, so she'll be fully grown. She handed him the photo. He squinted at it, held it further from his face, close enough that his nose touched, then back again, writing all the while in con concentration. Hmm, yes, I saw a girl like this just yesterday. Or last week. Three days ago. I come to think of it, I haven't seen my dog in about three days either. I haven't seen my wife either. Ah. I apologize, but I must find her soon. Oh, right, right, right. The children are always in a hurry. Which is good, save the waiting for when you're old like me. Uh, where was this girl? It was, uh, it was a coffee joint, I believe. Yes, it was definitely a cafe. It was a talk of the towel, that one. But that was a long time ago. I remember when my wife and I used to go there. Why did they got little tarts for espresso? You have to get something sweet to balance out that bitterness. But what do you children know of bitterness? Hopefully nothing. And I hope you never shall. Sir, the girl. The girl, I oh guess the girl, she was a waitress there, made decent coffee, not good, not bad either, cheap though, which is good, you get what you paid for, right? You buy cheap, you're gonna get cheap, you always always get cheap things, but be sure to splurge on occasion, that's the key to saving your money. Sir, oh, what was he saying? Actually, I skipped that accidentally. Uh, uh please, where, where, was this, where was this cafe kind, sir? Oh, the cafe, it was, uh, it was down, uh, what street was that? My wife and I used to go there all the time before she mm, was somewhere else other than the street. I was with my son that day, you know. His response degraded to mumbles and hand moves and apparently meant something. Marge briefly wondered if this was some kind of tea she could brew to make this conversation go, fa uh, go faster, or at least help his memory along to her entire point in being here. Unfortunately, he was her best lead for now. For however long that would be. Which was beginning to shape up to be forever. Yes, of course. And then, and then Marge dies of old age in the end. Right, so you're gonna take the 3 o'clock tram to Rue de l'Eglise, and then there's another tram about 4.15, around now I'm about to say, because it's about the most unreliable tram I've had the misfortune of riding, but, but sir, I have a broom. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah, you witches wear brooms over us, right? Well, it's by uh, Plus, plus de, de Moulin, or I said a lot of French... Uh, words, by the way. So I assume we're in, like, fantasy Paris or something, you know? Paddy. Across the street from a statue. Don't remember who it's a statue of, though. Oh, thank you, sir. I must go. You take care, little witch. If you see my wife anywhere, tell her I'll be by shortly. She'll probably have the dog of her. Oh, yeah. Well, the dog of her? Oh, actually, your wife is, uh, the other woman we just met. She was off before, or, yeah, she was off before he could continue the conversation. Old people, she thought. Cute sometimes, but they're in no hurry, are they? There are at least five streets named Rue de Legais. I don't know how to, I don't know how to pronounce that, but, um, but only three of them had a statue. One of them was close by. Even the old man had said it was on the other end of the town, they left only two streets she needed to check. On a hunch, she went to the closer of the two. It was high noon. No, um, it was high noon, the air traffic had lulled a bit and she took the opportunity to enjoy herself in taking the view. The city from the air was her most treasured sight. She could, if she looked hard enough, 
see the crowd scurry along the winding streets like ants in a line. She could follow the endless housing and twisting lanes to where they broke against the waters of the Mediterranean. Or Mediterranean, I, I don't know, I always say that wrong, Mediterranean. She could, if she so wished, fly to the beaches and while barefoot along the warm sands, a small break from the day. But sand is irritating, coarse and rough. So, you know, would you actually want to walk on sand? Perhaps grab a sweet or two, sit on a jetty, and space out looking over the infinite horizon. Mars sighed, if only there were more time to enjoy these things. If only business were better. Uh, but if business were better, then she wouldn't she just not be just as busy? Either the shop is at risk of closing, she must struggle to scrounge together the funds, or the shop does well, she has work all the time. The latter had to be a better scenario. Better to be busy but well off than struggling to survive. Yes, she had been paid well today and possibly earned a doctor's business. Well, you know, if business does do well, then you could do something called expanding. <laughs> you know, you could like hire people and delegate the work or whatever. You know, you gotta make some witch employees, I guess, do the work. The doctors made good money and perhaps she already saved the shop. He would tell all his doctor friends and then there'll be more money than they needed. Perhaps Madame Odette could take on more apprentices. But if she wondered what would happen to me. She halted midair. If the shop were to do well, if Madame Odette were to hire more witches, there would no longer be just the two of them. Would she play favorites? Certainly she would have less time for Marjolaine in any event. That fact made her stomach hop around a bit. She knew what happened sometime. There would come a day when she parted ways with her mentor. She would find her own way. She hoped it was a long way out, but that day would have to come. But never mind that. There was a street and a cafe as well. Frankly, there was a cafe every other street, so this could very well be the wrong one. Still, she landed. Do, 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 do. Well, coffee hit her nose. These old cafes were soaked in it. Not surprising, the smell would waft into the outdoor seatings. It was a nice smell, but the taste itself was lacking. Madame Odette preferred tea, as did Marjolaine, but she also preferred the smell of coffee to that of tea. It was just a unique smell. There was a... something about it. She did not know what. Waiters wiped tables, indoors and out, in absence of any other work. There was only one customer in the shop, sitting at a table by the window, reading a newspaper. She thought better of asking about the girl. Instead, she found the most important looking fellow there. The one wearing a vest. Something you need? Yes, I'm looking for the girl in this picture. I was told she might be working here. And why do you need to know? I have a delivery for her. A package from an older gentleman. I guess that's true, yeah. I was wondering if she was lying about it. No, this is true. She has the ring box. A courier? A witch courier? How old of fashion. Perhaps I know something of this girl. She does indeed work here. Ah, oh, good. Is she here today? Marge beamed. The delivery was coming to an end. No. Well, would you please give, give me her address so I can deliver the item to her? No. You may leave it here. I will see that she gets it when she's in. Sir, my apologies. I was asked to deliver this especially. I must see personally that the woman gets this item. It is special. I'm sure it is. However, I will not give her her address. Uh, perhaps this is one of those situations in which a bribe would help. But all the money she accrued had to go toward the shop. The day of all days was not the day to waste funds on bureaucracy. Again, my apologies, but I do not have much to offer. We might come to an arrangement. He pointed at one of his employees. That simpleton broke one of my portal filters. I'll be firing him at the end of his shift. Until then, our machine is down. I have the parts on order and delivery is supposed to be on its way, but it's been on hours. I'm feeling a little impatient today. Go to the shop, get the part for me in return. I shall give you her address if and only if you get the part for me before the other delivery man arrives. <laughs> yet, yet another race. Understood. Yet uh, she got the parcel shop's address and raced out of the cafe. She beat one courier today and she'll be another. It'll be easy. All she do all she needs to do is just fly around. But the parcel shop was not even that far away. She was in the door in two minutes flat, asking the front desk clerk for the filters. Okay. So, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know about this game's budget. Some people are drawn, some are not, it seems. Was there a mistake in the delivery? You already gave those to the other courier. Which one? Marge's heart sank as she asked. She knew she was too late. But Church Street deliveries. 
is one of those covered motor cars has a logo on the side. Can't miss it. Shall I call the customer? Have we made a mistake? No, there's no mistake. Thank you for your time. Well, time to do a robbery? Time to rob the church? No, 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 no. This was her best lead. She launched down the street, dodging a couple cars, but realized she should pull off for a better view. Not here, not the next street. Blast! Where was the car? There. Two streets from the cafe. A van of a canvas covered truck bed. Marsh caught up to the van, pulled up to the back, seized one of the flaps, and it let it go and broke off. This was wrong. What was her plan? Steal the filters? Was she a thief now? Goodness, was it worth the karma? Yes, do it. Do it. You like, you show you the power of the dark side. No, um, Marge returned to the cafe just behind the van. She had been beaten, let the price of arrogance be defeat. She waited until the delivery man left the cafe before approaching. Perhaps the manager would take pity on him. <laughs> he doesn't look like the very merciful, merciful type. Ah, the witch is back. The courier has already delivered my filters. I don't require your services, so you may leave. But sir, I must ask you. We had a deal. You are slow, you get nothing. Good day. Why are you so cruel? I will call the constables if you don't leave my shop, girl. Her throat got warm and she bit back tears. How could this wretched man be so callous? If only I could shoot lightning from my fingers and yell unlimited power. No, uh, <laughs> the different uh, expression, I don't know. You horrible slug! She screamed. The customer of the newspaper looked at her with interest. How can you be so heartless? You refuse to answer a simple question. I cannot complete this delivery without your help. You use me for a game of yours. Calmly, he called to a woman inside, or called to a woman inside, seated behind the counter. Margaret, call the constables. May all your coffee be weak. <laughs> you know, we cast a curse. What do you say, actually? Uh, he said, like. That, it's like it's out of max, so I can't look at it. <laughs> oh, whatever. Even though I try to like go back in line. Oh, is there like a log, maybe? History? What do you say? He said, Marjorie, get the constables on the line. Okay, that's what he said. Actually, while I'm here, actually, I might as well say. I mean, you never know. You know, my computer could crash. It happened before. I should probably save. Uh, where's the menu? Here? Oh, it's hard to see, actually. So it, like, it kind of blends into the background. Anyway, Marjorie cursed. A proper crude curse from the bottom of her heart. She meant it, it would be thrice punished. Do not bother calling constables. I'm leaving now, I'll never return to this, this, this shack. Went. At the first line, she turned and spat in the walkway outside the cafe. She turned once more, adding, And may your pes pastries look pedestrian. It's a real curse. Marge stormed across the street and then into an alcove, hidden from sight, choking back tears and shivering in spite of the late afternoon heat. What an absolute waste of time. She gained nothing from that exchange. She remembered the curse she uttered and the dread of what she done took hold. How would she, punish How would she be punished for this one? Has she doomed Odette's shop? That must be it. She cursed the shop and in turn her shop would be cursed. Odette would lose her home and it was all Marge's fault. She collapsed onto a stoop, holding her head in her hands. People walked in front of her, never once turning an eye to her while she wept. Odette would lose the shop, it was all her fault. Odette would lose the shop, it was all her fault. All her fault. She shouldn't have done that. She should have never cursed the cafe. She wished she could take it back. Personally, I would use like a death curse. <laughs> the, cur the curse is not powerful enough. Anyway. Uh, miss? A hand touched her shoulder, she slapped it away. Miss, the voice said again. I'm sorry, but please get hold of yourself. Marsh took a deep, shaky breath and looked up. It was the employee from earlier, the one the awful man had called a simpleton. <laughs> okay. Is a, is a rose on his head, by the way? Your boss is horrible. Yes, he just fired me. May he rot in some foreign prison. All the good my curses do anyway. He smirked. You're one of those witches that deliver things, yes? I, I am. So you witches really do curse people. I didn't mean it. I mean, I did, but I regret it. I would not. He will be the only one weeping when his business goes under. It was once the greatest cafe in the city. Now it's a coffee shop with weak coffee. Excellent decision. Poetic justice. Justice though it may be, I should not have cursed them. They will come back to me and inflict three times the pain. The employee lit a cigarette and took a deep drag before speaking. That makes you feel any better. That man does not feel. If I know any math, it's that three times nothing is still nothing. 
Okay. I was wondering, though, I mean, I'm, I was wondering if the manager did have, like, a good reason. I mean, obviously, I mean, in real life, you probably shouldn't just be, you know, giving your employees, like, a uh, place of residence just ran to random strangers in the first place. But it did try to make a deal of that one in the first I don't know. Anyway. You will come out of this on scale, little witch. And you have earned my appreciation for all that's worth. As he takes a puff of the cigar. Isn't that bad for him? It's probably bad for your flower, you know? Don't you know that smoking causes your flower to wilt? Anyway. The two remain silent. The man finishes his cigarette and flick the remains in the tree. Uh, actually, that's not a cigarette. That's a cigar. There's a difference. Or at least, you know, the way it's drawn anyway. It looks like a cigar. More so than a cigarette, but anyway. Why do you need his help anyway? I have delivery for the girl in this picture. He says she works for him. He promised to give me her address in exchange for getting his machine parts. I see. So if I were to write Carolyn's address here on the back of this photograph, it would make this all better? Carolyn is her name? Or Caroline? Caroline. Coraline? Coraline. Coraline? I don't know how to say it. Coraline. You know, Carolyn? I want to say Carolyn. Carolyn, right? Yes, she's walking distance from here, actually. Uh, but I will request one thing in exchange for the address. Yes? Marjolaine was apprehensive, not wanting further distractions from her main goal. I've never seen a witch fly on the broom. She smiled, rubbed her face on her arm, and mounted the broom. She struts straight up. Up, up to the evening sky, did a wide loop for him, be careful to look for any place, and flew back down, hopping off the broomstick and into a little curtsy. He clapped and handed her the photo. Well, thank you, sir. It'll be funny if, like, ah, just kidding. It was just a prank. You know, it's like, nah, I was just pretending to be nice. Actually, no, um, she shook his hand, almost shook his arm out of his shoulder, and took off down the street. All right. She skipped over to the town home, number six, number seven, number eight. Charming little buildings built up rather than out. She could see herself living one of these one day, with a planter hanging from each window, maybe from the fencing as well. Marjolaine adjusted her hat. She spoofed her overcoat and made sure the buckles of her bag were loose for a little flare which produced the delivered uh, for a little flare when producing uh, the delivered item. She brushed, uh, brushed aside the hair sitting beneath her hat, so no strands of scared her eyes. She'd be the picturesque witch courier. And this picturesque witch courier, feeling her appearance sufficient, used a knocker three times. A young woman answered. <laughs> she's also not, you know, drawn properly. Uh, in fact, she's actually kind of scary. She's like a monster. Yes, this was her. The girl in the photograph. It doesn't look the same, though. <laughs> Reminds me of what's her what's her name? I can't forget. I, I don't remember the name. One one of the uh, villains from Full Metal Alchemist, actually, because of the hair. Anyway, uh, this is where the win for the quest was over. A delivery for you, Miss," said Marge, beaming smoothly. She reached into her bag and drew the little ring box. It was difficult to find you. I must say, is that from the old man? Yes. I don't want it. Pardon? I don't want anything he has to offer me. I don't want whatever is in the little box. But miss, I've been searching all day. Throw it in the garbage. Give it to a dog. Toss it down a sewer for all I care. It is an empty thing that means nothing. He can offer me nothing. He gave me nothing growing up, but he'll give me nothing now that I am grown. I'll not accept whatever blasted thing he has tricked you to delivering. Miss, I must insist you take this. No. He told me it was his heart. He has no heart. He thinks some useless trick he'll give me back my childhood. As you think a piece of jewelry or whatever can undo years spent ignoring his daughter. Tears came to the young woman's eyes. Throw it down the nearest sewer. It will rot with the rest of him. She slammed the door, leaving Marjolaine alone on the stoop. The sun traversed a fraction of the evening sky before Marge could act. When she did, she simply stuffed the ring box back into her bag. Well, better sell it to a pawn shop. I mean, your uh, ultimate goal is to make money, right? <laughs> Anyway, she staggered down the steps. She straddled her broom. She took off for the sea. Faster, faster, faster she went. Fast enough for the wind to rip her the tears from her eyes to punch the sobbing from her lungs. She held a white knuckle grub and a broomstick the whole way over the houses, the beaches, and over the ocean. A terminal waste of a day. How could everyone be so indifferent to her struggles? Has she not worked so hard to make all of them happy? And what had this struggle yielded? 
Doors have been slammed in her face. The woman cried angrily at her. A man used her rather than answer a simple question. I guess this is like a metaphor for being like a, you know, Amazon delivery person. Or not Amazon. Well, I mean, it could be any kind of delivery person, I guess. Or that contract delivery person, anyway. Another one had been so unfeeling, she may as well have slapped her. And she nearly stole, and she cursed the man. And she wasted her entire day trying to fulfill a poor man's, or a poor old man's request. What a complete waste this was, too. She couldn't take on additional deliveries. Instead, she allowed us to become infatuated with the romance of helping an old man reconcile with his daughter. Look what a waste this was, Marjolaine. Look at what you get for blindly helping others. Used and cast aside without gratitude. And therefore, you must use your powers for evil. You must destroy them all. Cast meteor on the town. Um, such will ever be your path to be a tool in discard, equal in usefulness to a day's old newspaper. It was that moment she flew through a flock of some passing seagulls. She slammed to two or three, who squawked and scratched at her in anger. When she slipped from the formation, and she took out the ring box. This is his fault. He has suckered her into taking this stupid job. What kind of man would ignore his family? How could anyone work so hard they could forget about their daughter? What a disgusting old man. Who did he work so hard for? Himself? She squeezed the ring box in her hand. How dare he? She just wanted to help. And as a consequence, she stole, she cursed. She was on the path of becoming a black witch because of him. You know, is this like a real thing? They actually become evil, and then... How dare he? Marjolaine hurled the ring box down so hard she nearly lost her grip on the broom. She watched it rotate as it fell down, 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 until it made a small splash and disappeared beneath the waves. He could have sold that. What are you doing? Could have been worth something. Anyway, you idiot, Marsh, she thought. You were the only one who wanted to blame here. You accepted the request. You helped the mean old woman. You allowed yourself to be tricked by the cafe owner. You thought to steal to fulfill his request. And Corlin? Or Carolyn, whatever. How is her anger your fault? Finally, she unclenched her jaw, and as she saw the ring box melt into the sea, she jumped off her broom and plummeted in and after it. Odette's words came to her mind. If you're angry, it's because you have allowed it. She's beneath the waves, where the waters began to darken. Plenty of breath. She looked around and up and down and to each side. If you were tricked, it is because you're not yet wise. The box would be black against deep blue waters. She thought briefly to give up. It would be easy. Weakness is ignorance of strength. Panic is ignorance of calm. Bliss is acceptance that all cannot be changed by your hand that cannot be changed. Is this, is this the Jedi way? <laughs> calm is the gift of bliss. Strength is the gift of calm. There is no emotion. There is no passion. There is only the Force. No, uh... <laughs> Her heart throbbed in her chest, in her ears. She ignored the pounding, the wiggling sounds in the water, and burning in her throat, the emptiness in her lungs. She concentrated. She strained her eyes to that little black cube against the deep dark blue. If you're blissful, Marjolaine, you possess strength. Others might panic. It is, of course, a natural reaction. You're expected to panic, but magic can do the unexpected. She strained her eyes harder. She calmed herself. Her lungs threatened to allow in the water. She needed air, but more so she needed time. Concentrate. One hears the goddess everywhere, so one eventually tunes out her voice if one is not careful. She always speaks. You need only answer to her words to channel her power. Something emanated from her and the water became bright. So bright she squirted even more response. There was the box. She swam toward it, lungs like blazing coals in her chest. Against the pain she swam, against the currents and the lack of air, against all reason she swam for the little black box. Got it. No air left. How deep was she? Who cares? Up. 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 Light danced against her face. The pressure had become light. It was there. The surface was right there. Her arms could move no more, so she pushed her legs and then... And then... She surfaced. However briefly. She gasped. Lungs shrieked against the influx and she dipped back below a wave and back over in time for another gasp. Only this time it was full of seawater which had her choking. Back underwater she did get over the waves but they were too tall. She needed, she needed her broom. She needed her hand above water but the water rose to drown her each time. She got one half of one part of a much needed breath before the water moved to cover her. 
again, up again and again and again. As she had it in her hand, she poured herself into the broom without any known strength of her own. Many minutes passed. Thoughtless minutes spent breathing and shaking above the water. The sun set and she did not move. At some point, the night rolled in. She regained her senses over the open dark ocean. When had that happened? Goodness, she nearly drowned! I best not tell Madame Odette. Uh, she needed to get back to the shop. It was night and certainly she would be worried. And certainly Marge would have to actually dust the whole shop tomorrow, but never mind that. The lights of the Côté de Hirat, I guess, was, were visible in the distance, so she took off towards them. The city held its own beauty. The yellow lights below may well have been a reflection of the stars above. Streets so familiar in the daytime proved much more difficult to navigate. Landmarks became shadow and streets were black rivers flanked by the glow of fireflies. Difficult as it was to follow, she found the broomstick express tens of minutes later, distinctly bright against the other closed shops in their street. She hopped off her broom and hoped to sneak in, but Odette sat at the corner. Marjolaine. She whipped from behind the counter and stood tall before Marge, scowling more than she had ever seen. Do you have any idea how long I've waited for you? I even called the constables to look for you. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Madame Odette. I... Her throat locked up. Tears came to her eyes, but she powered through them. I was out doing deliveries all day. Marge turned out her purse for the day. A good number of coins and a check addressed to the shop. It felt such a small mountain now that she saw the lot, but she had worked so hard for it. Odette relaxed her shoulders, but only a little. I'm impressed, girl, but why did you leave without telling me? All day, I've been sick with worry. You know, we don't have cell phones in this universe. It hasn't been invented yet. I saw the bills. Marjolaine could barely choke off the words. The ones on top of the bookcase. I thought we would lose the shop. So I left to help the old man and took other jobs along the way. Odette's arms hung loosely at her sides. I helped a horrible old woman, but she paid well, and the doctor too. I tried to help a cafe owner as well, but he tricked me and cursed, and I cursed the shop. Odette stood there and I made her meet her student's eyes. I did not want to ask for your help. Why, Madame Odette? I would never not help you. I know. And you have, you sweet silly girl. You have helped me more than you can ever know. I didn't ask because I thought it was my job as an adult to take care of a child. An adult cannot lean on a child for help. They just can't. And this is my failing. You're so much more dependable than I ever thought. I suppose I'm not one to believe I cannot lean on you for anything because I have never leaned on anyone for anything. Marjolaine. She fell forward and embraced her student. <laughs> okay. I'm so proud of you. You are a fine witch. But, madame, I cursed someone today. Well, that's what witches do, you know? <laughs> we all make mistakes, witchling. And I can see by your worry and your wet clothes that you have paid the price threefold already. <laughs> was, was that what it was? That was the, tra that was the uh, misfortune, I guess, from cursing somebody. But we might lose the shop. We will not lose the shop. I will see to it. And the money you gather today will help. She hoisted her bag off her shoulder onto the counter, taking out a billfold full of money. But do not think that your teacher has been not been busy all day. The elderly always need their remedies and poultices. I've made a fair amount myself. This combined with your earnings today should cover our past due expenses. Come now. She patted Marge's head gingerly. I've made stew. We'll talk about where you've been all day. The smell hit her first. It wore Marjolaine to her core. Ocean water that had soaked into her very bones was driven out by the smell of that stew. Her shoulders slumped and the exertion of the day finally slammed into her. So she flopped into a chair inside. That was the sigh of someone much older than you, girl. What happened? Marge wrung her hands beneath the table. Would Madame Odette be angry with her? She had specifically turned the old man away, but she helped him anyway. Marjolaine. No stew until I heard the story. You know, she always does all that, does that all the time. This is a very specific type of torture. Like, no food. You must starve until you tell me the truth. I... I helped the old man. Which one? The one who came by. He, you said he couldn't pay. That was no man, child. Did you not notice? Madame Odette? Odette stood there with a couple of bows, quizzing her student with a look. Urging her on. Nothing. You really did not notice he was a ghost? Marjolaine, I know you've been studying. You should know this. Not ghosts. Why not ghosts? 
They're scary. <laughs> okay. It was it was a ghost, I guess. There are benign spirits trapped in this world because of a task yet completed. Ghost stories are nonsense, child. You know this. Odette set the ball before her student. And rather than sitting, she chose to lecture Marge in between bites. Wait a minute, if he's a ghost, then how did he order like food? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's just how it works. I mean, maybe because you always you always assume, you know, any kind of story, a ghost can only interact with, uh, you know, the people they want to interact with. But maybe he just interacts with, you know, anyone who see the ghost, you know, they're not invisible to anyone necessarily. But then I wonder, like, how do they how do they get the photo? You know, how do they like have physical objects on them? I don't know. I guess the ghosts in this world are different. <laughs> They're more material. Well, they do not retain uh, memories beyond their old life. Surely you must have noticed this when you went after him. She thought back to the cafe. She th did think it odd he mentioned it had been a long time since he's seen a courier witch, even though they had met not oh, twenty minutes before. But Marge had assumed he was old, forgetful, and a bit senile, maybe. He returns every few years, asking me to deliver his heart. I made that mistake once, long ago. I will never make it again. Marge played her stew, not really focusing on anything, instead mulling over the events of the delivery. I worked so hard to find that girl, Madame Odette, but she did not want his heart. She choked down a tear. He said he worked so hard for her. He just wanted to be a good person. Child, some people are not grateful for such a thing. He worked all his life for his ideal of being a good person, and doing so, he ignored the ones he loved. He was so generous of his time and gave it so freely to others that he did not have enough left for those that truly mattered. Time is the most important thing to us as humans. We have so very little of it, we must parcel it out with care. Choosing how to spend your time is the most important aspect of love, I think. Odette stopped pacing about the room. She took a seat and stirred her bowl. Even then, sometimes your time is not enough. Sometimes people do not want all you have to offer, and nothing you can give them will change how you feel. So you must accept it. You will not always be enough. You cannot make people like you or want you. There will come a time when you must accept that you are not enough, you must move on. That's the reason the old man returns to my shop. He cannot accept this fact. His daughter, uh, Carolyn or Coraline, will forever reject his affection. He will roam this earth until she relents, and until it is no longer a matter we must worry about. In silence, the two ate, staring to the drain bowls until nothing was left. Odette finished first, of course, but Marge was not far behind. She stood to t take the dirty dishes. Odette thanked her. I still feel bad for him. I will convince his daughter that he does love her. I will complete this delivery one day and you owe me. A cake. Odette smiled at her student. D'accord, so is it d'accord? I, I assume it's a type of cake. <laughs> With pralan buttercream and meringue. I, I don't know how to say these words. And ganache? Ganache? I assume all of this is French. I don't even, the only French word I can say is croissant. You know? And assuming that's French, is croissant French? I assume it's French. Anyway. Odette stifled a laugh, blowing air out of her nose at her beaming protege. Go and make us some tea. Mars skipped over the sink, then the burner, and then grabbed some dried meat leaves. The perfect flavor for a cup of tea after a hearty dinner. She thought how well croissant might go with some mint tea. A bit of jam, just a smidgen off the knife. She glanced over at Madame Odette, who was now deep in thought with her hand on her chin, staring ahead unfocused. Would it be wrong to disturb her? She had been scuttled before about sneaking up on Odette when she was deep in thought, but she remembered her earlier words. Marjolaine approached her and gave her a hug. So very briefly, Odette recoiled and relaxed. Madame Odette? Your time is valuable to me. Odette teared up. She took a deep breath and embraced her student. More hugging. Not hugging today. Go ahead and finish her tea, little witchling. Alright, is that the end? Yep, okay, I felt like the end. There you go! Um, you know, it's, a, you know, it's just a sweet little story, I guess. Nothing, nothing too, um, mind-blowing, you know? No twists or anything like that. I mean, there's a small twist, I guess, the, the old man being a ghost. But really, it was just mostly just, uh, I guess, slice-of-life story about a witch courier. 
Um, again, I, I like, you know, the, you know, the problem, I, I think the, what it is is the budget, you know, it's like, I, I want to say, like, the art, I like the art style, I like the little animations that they gave, the, the sprites and everything, it's just, it's just that, obviously, it seems like they didn't have time to give, you know, sprites to everybody, is, you know, they had, they use, like, crude drawings instead, I mean, it, it would work as, like, a joke. For like one time but they did like a multiple times so i can only assume it really was like a a budget problem you know <laughs> i don't know um and another thing I, I i noticed was the fact that um the backgrounds you know they kept reusing the same background you know i, I really wish there was more variance at the very least i remember when you know when the time was changing you know it was it was morning then afternoon that was evening at the very least i feel like you, you, uh, you could have change the time in the actual backgrounds you know change it was, it was nighttime you know change it to nighttime at the very least i mean i don't know how easy that would be um you know you probably ch can't just like turn down the brightness and that's it you have to like change the you know the backdrop at least the sky and everything but you know i felt like at least you should, you should do that because otherwise it felt a little bit too repetitive in terms of the same backgrounds over and over again but uh it's okay i guess i don't know it's um Mm, nothing really sticks out to me, but I guess I like I like the universe, you know. I like the idea of like witches living at the same time as technology and everything. They don't really expand on that too much, but it's an interesting idea, I guess. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I would say basically, yeah. I mean, I, I would see this as like a like a like a, a one shot, you know, like a one shot of like a. Of like a manga or something that's how i see it anyway or like a web comic yeah like a, ve a very short story just to give an idea what the characters are and everything and their motivations you know and that sort of thing right just a very brief glimpse like a well literally a slice of life you know that's what it is and i do like slice of life um stories i guess um if nothing else, I mean, maybe it's just me. I, I think it's always, it's just me. This is like a very subjective opinion. I feel like sometimes though, the monologuing is a bit too much. But it might just be me. Because a lot of visual novels do that though, you know? And almost every visual novel does this. They just do a million monologues. And I kind of don't like it, you know? If there is a monologue, I like to keep it short, you know? To give like context what's gonna happen. I much prefer dialogue. I much prefer characters interacting with each other, you know, and the plot move and progressing and all that. Instead of like focusing on like having a monologue. I don't know, it just feels long to me. I don't know why, but... I don't know, I, I play so much vision novels at this point, I just don't like monologues, but I think that's just me though. And I guess, um... The music's okay, by the way. I mean, I don't know how many songs there were, but you know, it was alright. Um... And, and yeah, I think... I think that's good. I don't, I don't have any, any other thoughts. I'm trying to think, like, anything else I want to say? Anything else I want to say? I think that's, I think that's it. You know, again, the only thing I, I I wish was the game had a slightly, maybe like more time put into it, you know, or something, or bigger, slightly bigger budget, just to just to, you know, make it a bit more polished. Because otherwise, it, it was very good at the beginning. You know, I felt like the I really liked the again the animation for the characters and all that, but. Again, it's just, it doesn't really, you know, extend to everybody else, it seems. And, and that was it. Oh yeah, I, I also want to mention that it's, um... I, I didn't know at the time, because it just said visual novel, but I guess this, this really is, was just a kinetic novel, which is fine, you know. I don't mind kinetic novels too much. Depends if it's a good story, I guess. But, you know, some, you know, I've noticed actually, this is, a, this, is a, this is a tangent, to be honest, but like, I've noticed sometimes, especially on Steam, you know, people who are not really familiar with visual novels, um, they complain sometimes when there's no decisions in a visual novel. Well, you know, it's called a kinetic novel, you know, that's what it's called. A kinetic novel is just something, it's basically a visual novel, but without any of, like, choices or anything like that, you know, it's just a straight up story, which is, you know. Yeah, some people I feel like, well, what's the point, you know, well, you know, that why can I just read a book? Well, the difference is that a vision novel, it has music and sound effects, you know, and pictures and all that. It's a slightly different uh, method to it, I feel like, you know? So, I don't know. I feel like, but, 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 but speaking of that, though, I feel like this game might, might have been better, like, yeah, might have been better, like, maybe just a straight up story, though. Maybe, I don't know. There was some sound effects, you know, her flying around and everything. Um, I kind of wish 
developer. I mean, maybe uh, this is just too high like expectations for me. You know, this is just like uh, this is like a very uh, like a thing. You know that would appeal to people though you know i i don't I, people complain about like kinetic novels or, or i feel like complaining too much but it would definitely be a cool thing if you would use the medium a bit more you know the whole point of vision novel and everything sometimes there maybe sometimes there's certain scenes where you don't need words right sometimes novels you know we think of novels and stories the book is only words for the most part unless you're reading like a light novel maybe there's sometimes there's pictures but uh usually it's just words the power of a visual novel is showing scenes sometimes without words right so if, they, if there's one thing i guess it's the budget thing again but definitely the, it wouldn't better if there's some cgs basically you know at least cgs are flying around maybe at the very least it'd be kind of cool right but i guess yeah this is just a very you know, uh, low, but I assume low budget, like indie visual novel. You know, I checked it out, uh, uh, and you know, basically, I think it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. I mean, it's you know, it's the best value for the price, which is nothing. I paid nothing for this except my time, I guess. But there you go. I like the idea, though. I like, I like the, I like the, the idea of, of um, Marjolaine and everything. You know. But, uh, I guess that'll be that, though, you know? That'll be that for the Witchling Marjolaine. Um, I guess, uh, let me just say for YouTube, uh, thanks for watching, for one. But also, if you didn't know, I stream these games live on Twitch, so check me out over there if you're interested. I also have other playthroughs on my, on my YouTube channel, if you want to look for those, if you want. And, you know, I guess until next time, see you then.